As we come off of spring break, introduction to security starts with week 11. I colored it yellow so you can easily find what week we are working in. So this week, uh, focus on starting to work on module 8 and test out. And it'll be due on uh, April 10th. That'd be the following Friday. We're also the Azure security assignment is going to be due by April 10th. So this week, uh, focus on yeah, working on test out eight and make sure that you're starting to get along with Azure security. Some of the things that are deployed with Azure security, such as fail to ban, will take several days to get results. So you'll want to start, get it set up and let it run for a day or two before you can actually get um, screenshots that'll be be with the correct results. So step one, create a free Azure student account. You've already done that in class. So you would log into your Azure portal. Uh, step two, deploy a free Azure Linux VM. You've mostly deployed that already. If we look at the document, we see that now step one, we created our Azure account. We deployed our 750 hour Linux virtual machine. One thing that we have not done yet though, is <clears throat> set up the inbound ports. We need to have port 22, 80, and 443 open. We also need to set up a static address for our virtual machine. And we need to set up a DNS name for the virtual machine. So those steps have not been totally complete yet. If you log into your Azure portal, go to your dashboard and find your S1 virtual machine that we deployed in class prior to spring break. When it starts up, we have a public address we can click on the public address to configure a static address so it will not change. It should automatically be set to dynamic. So extremely hard, all you have to do is click static. There's also a DNS name label, which is optional. So we can give our account a name. So you can do, say, S1 and your last name to see if that is a valid DNS name. If I click Save, we'll see if that will take both options. I notice I have a checkbox that the domain name was successful. I'll click save a second time and it will actually save the static address and save the DNS name. So the first save only checked to make sure the name was available before that it went ahead and saved it. So now to access the server, you can access it via the IP address that is given or the DNS name that you gave it. In my case, S1 Goodman dot centralus.cloudapp.azure.com. Yes, it's a long name, but you can use that versus the IP address. <clears throat> so I'll go back to overview. The next thing is to open up port 22, which I think we've already done during installation, but we also need to open up port 80 and 443. The assignment has us install a website and port 80 and 443 are required to be open for website information. On our dashboard, I'm gonna go back to dashboard and click on our S1 virtual machine again. 
This gets me back to the menu where that I can modify the security settings. So as I scroll down, we're going to look for, I think it's under network actually. their security under networking. And that's just giving me recommendations. Let me click on networking and see this is where the where the firewall rules are specified. So right now we have an inbound rule allowing port 22 from any source to any destination. I need to go ahead and add other inbound ports. Source port ranges would be from any source port <clears throat> and the destination we want to allow port 80 and port 443, so I can put a comma and add 443 in the destination port range. In the name, we can name it www, so we know that this here is for web traffic inbound. After I click add, I may have to refresh the page. No, I just have to wait on it. So now I have inbound port 8080 and 443 is allowed into the system. We named it www, so we can identify that as our rule for allowing web traffic. So that will complete the first page of the Azure hosted CentOS. You deploy out the virtual machine, you give it a DNS name, you set the IP address to static, and you open up web traffic for SSH and WWW traffic on port 80 and 443. Updating CentOS using sudo yum update. We did that prior to spring break, but we should go ahead and do that um, on Tuesday of this week. So at that point, you'll need to launch PuTTY, and you may need to double check your IP address after you launch PuTTY to see if it is the same from prior to spring break. So as I load, I'm going to double check. I see the 168.61.16166 is still the same, so I can connect. But there is a chance that since it's been more than a week that that IP address has changed. So you may have to update your configuration. And just remember your, your videos for creating the ID RSA PPK, we talked about that prior to spring break so that we could access our machines remotely. I believe in week 10, there's some instructions. Let me go verify that. I may have sent that as an email. I'm resetting up PuTTY. I believe I sent that out as an email. Okay, I checked my sent item. I did tell you to have PuTTY set up for home. Uh, week nine looks like is where that I've got the video that goes over the student account and 
you can watch that video on how to, I think it's around a 30 minute mark or something like that. Uh, you can watch where we set up and configure PuTTY and use PuTTY Keygen if you've not already set that up at your house to get in. So back to PuTTY. And log into your system and verify that your system is still up to date. So sudo yum update. And it looks like there is several patches this week. So I'm going to update my system. After this finishes updating, this should be the point at which you are at on uh, by Tuesday evening. You should have have PuTTY set up so you can access it from your house. You can access the Azure portal from your house. You've got the ports open and you've got your CentOS uh, DNS name set and you have it updated. Okay, so I'll pause and let mine finish updating. Once it's completed, I'm going to go and exit out. And I will be creating a second video for Thursday's class where we start talking about and setting up fail to ban. And then the following week, uh, you'll set up your web server. You also take your screenshots and submit for the assignment and finish test out module eight.